Kia ora katoa katoa. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the official Fight Week press conference for the Stonewood Homes, Joseph Parker, Junior Far, Heavyweight Belt, and Association with Headquarters. Can't believe we're here, can we? Hey, how good is this? Level one in Auckland. Level one, and we are down to do it. Arguably the biggest boxing match in recent times, particularly in the heavyweight division. Just a couple of housekeeping matters. Uh, toilets, if you need to go, ladies and gentlemen, you just gotta go out towards the subway and go around the back. In case of an emergency, you can stand up and scream and wail and just keep your eye on it at the green exit sign and then go out to the main doors onto Victoria Street West. So that's the simple part of it. Uh, events like this, particularly in the times that we live in, uh, can't happen without sponsors, so please bear with me as I remind all involved of these sponsors that have come to play in one of the biggest events in a long, long time. And we are very fortunate that we live in a magnificent part of the world. Our naming sponsor, Stonewood Homes, our associate naming sponsor, Headquarters Viaduct Restaurant and Bar. Broadcast partner, Spark Sport. Media partner, New Zealand Herald. Major sponsor, Andrew Sims and Great Wall Motors. Major sponsor, Carpus Tires. Major sponsor, Bartercard. Official accommodation partner, Ramada Hotels by Wyndham. Official beer partner, Asahi. Official wine partner, The People's Wine by Constellation Wines. Design partner, Hyde Group Advertising. Our print partner is Saw Print. Our water partner, as you can see, is New Zealand's Pure RCR. And of course, our thanks to Eddie Hearn at Matchroom and Lou Debella for Debella Entertainment. And of course, the event promoters who are none other than but now it's time for the main event. All right, thank you, Stephen. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to level one here in Auckland, New Zealand. Sometimes I say we're the only show pony in town, but this time we are the only show pony in the world. This fight is going to be worldwide. Over 180 countries will be watching this fight come Saturday night. TV3 in Samoa, main event in Australia, to zone with the rest of the world. It is going to be quite a showpiece for New Zealand. No cardboard cutouts, no pumped in sound. It's gonna be a legit packed house at Spark Green, and I can't wait to get this thing rolling. This is brought to you by David Higgins from Team Duco, Eddie Hearn from Matchroom, and of course, we got Lou Debella from Debella Entertainment. Are you ready to meet the fighters, ladies and gentlemen? Press, what are you gonna do? Yeah. They have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the red corner on the night, would you please welcome Team Fa, WBO ranked number five, and the WBO Oriental Heavyweight Interim Champion. This is Mr. Junior Fa, his trainer Eugene Behrman, and manager Mark Cadell. champion of the world, Joseph Parker, his trainer, Kevin Barry, and manager, the incomparable, Mr. David Higgins. This is Team Parker. I got this shot. Here we go, folks. Two New Zealand fighters. That's even, that's even sounds better. Top five in the world. Joseph Parker, ranked number three in the world, the WBO for WBO heavyweight world champion, 29 years of age, 27 ones, 21 by KO. Took Anthony Joshua to the distance, suffered a narrow defeat to Dillian White. Has never been knocked out. Got 21 guys on the canvas. Junior Farr, ranked number five in the WBO, 31 years of age, 19 wins, never been beaten, 10 of those wins come by way of KO. Two South Auckland boys, one of Samoan descent, one of Tongan descent, both proud of their Kiwi and Pacific heritage. It's not rocket science, they've met before, but that was the amateur days, but 
Two and two. Nothing between these two. Or is there? Joe's had a high profile career. Junior has just quietly moved his way through the ranks. The question we'll have to ask, or might get answered at the end of this fight is, who is the best heavyweight in New Zealand? Is it Joseph Parker, or is it the Junior Farr? Only, only days now until we find out. You've got to be a little bit excited about this one. And we have to commend David Higgins at the end of the table, founder and director of Duco Events, Joseph Parker's manager, the Duco Events team, for pulling off what many around the world are going, how do you do that? Well, they have done it once again. And Dave, I'd like you to uh, say a few words about the event and welcome. Oh, look, hey, thank you, Stephen. And thank you, everyone here. Thank you to the fighters and the teams participating. Um, look, it, this has been a tricky promotion, to be honest. Uh, you know, there was some coverage about two Cameron fights. It's kind of like deja vu. And in, in all the promotions we've done, I'd probably put this in the top three sort of trickiest to put together. You know, we've had uh, sickness-related delays. We've had uh, COVID hanging over us. I, I have to admit, I was very nervous, actually, very much relieved when we went back to level one yesterday. Uh, had we not, we would have had to shift the date out. And um, it's not like moving a music concert. There's dozens of complicated contracts, international TV. So anyway, I'm just pleased that we, we're on. And um, I think also I'm pleased that both guys are fully fit. The, the delay, I think, was a blessing in disguise. Junior was carrying, I think, an injury or health issue. And um, Joseph took the opportunity to get some um, surgery himself. So both guys are fully fighting for at their best, so there'll be no excuses. And this will undoubtedly be the biggest heavyweight boxing event in New Zealand history. And then I think, finally for me, to thank the foundation partners of the event, uh, Matchroom, the Bala, the Zone, Spark Sport, NZME, Stonewood Homes, Headquarters, and, and everyone else as well. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, David. So let's get on to the two main protagonists uh, beside me. Uh, you mentioned, of course, the Shane Cameron, David Tua fight. I ha have to ask you, Junior, first up, have you spoken to Shane? He was the underdog going in. Many are saying you are the underdog going in. Have you spoken about how not to get knocked out in early? Um, I have been speaking to uh, Shane Cameron, but this was a while ago. Uh, he just told me just to enjoy the ride, really, and then, you know, just to make the most of this opportunity that, uh, that I've been given. And, you know, this is a huge one for me. I'm taking it with both hands. You have gone on record quite openly and said you can knock Joseph out. Can you? Yeah, I can beat him. Can you knock him out? If I hurt him, I'll take him down. Are you the better fighter in this one? I'm hearing a lot of good talk about the way your, your mobility is better. Uh, do you feel you're in a better space to beat Joseph Parker? I feel much better than the, than, than my old self uh, a few months ago. You know, I'm feeling fully prepared for this fight. I feel like I'm peaking at the right time. Um, man, I'm just feeling good. I'm getting excited. So, yeah, man, I'm feeling good. I can't wait for the night. What's your chin like? Have you got a good chin? Because you know Joseph can hit. He can hit. I can move. I, I can dodge punches. And... So, so what you're saying is you feel that Joseph is slower. He's good. 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 I feel like I can figure them out. I feel like we have a good plan that we're going to execute on the night to make sure that I come out on top. <clears throat> All right, Joseph, there's a lot of pressure on you. I mean, we've seen it already in, in the papers the last couple of days. I mean, this could be a career make or breaker. Is that how you approach this one? Yeah, I approach this fight as, um, there is a lot of pressure on this fight, but pressure is uh, something that you put on yourself. And I feel, because I've trained hard with my team, and got some great rounds of sparring and bang work, running, all of that. I feel like I'm in a good place to put on a great, great performance. Does that gr great performance include a knockout? Because there, there are questions about where is that, the, the, where are those punches? Yeah, there's no secret that going into a fight, a fighter wants a knockout. And that's, that's what I might be looking for. I think that's what he's going to be looking for too. But I know that I possess the power to knock him out. How do you respond to the suggestion that you might be slower? Well, it's one way to find out. <laughs> on Saturday. Do, do you pick a knockout in this fight? Will, yeah, you, knock out, will you knock out Junior Farr? That's my plan. That's what I want to do. Do you have any particular round that you would like to throw out there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So early in the fight? I want to get him early. Okay. 
How are those hands? They're good? The elbows are all fine? The good thing about the postponement that David mentioned is that we're both 100% now. He was able to take care of his health issues and I was able to take care of my elbows. So this is, uh, there's no excuses. Come Saturday, when we fight, we're both at 100% and whoever wins is the best in the field. Do you guys actually like each other? Oh, he's a good guy. I like him. Really? Until you get in the ring? The ring is all business. You know, he wants to knock my head off and I want to do the same. Do you like him? <laughs> I think I've got a good beer. He's a nice fella. He is a you know, nice guy, it's all business at the end of the day. All and right. you know, I've been training to uh, take his head off, he's training to uh, take mine, so yeah, it's all good. Okay, let's move on. Mark Goodell, Junior's manager, down the end. Looking a lot healthier, you look healthy, mate, you look <laughs> good, you look happy about what's going on, but uh, we, uh, you've hinted that there are people at Duca who uh, weren't fond of reports coming out where you're opposing the judges and the officials and making comments about the club, so now's the time. Let's just get this out in the air. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I think uh, Eugene and I and, and Doug sat down and we looked at the list of judges, and you know, as I said in the paper the other day, you know, the, the Barry family is a very famous, successful Christchurch family, and we just thought it was a couple of Auckland boys fighting, so we should have you know Auckland judges, and we, we felt pretty strong about that, didn't we, Eugene? Um, well, we definitely just come in for a bit for the four We definitely didn't want Kevin to make from the pub. Um, <laughs> To, to be one of the judges, so he was a good judge. And, um, so, uh, I, are, you su are you suggesting you feel like you're being worked against when it comes to the judges? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, I think, I mean, look, everyone wants an advantage, right? Eh? Everyone wants bias. You know, we want the crowd to be on the outside, Joseph will want the crowd to be on the inside. Um, <clears throat> You know, we, we like the judges to see it our way, they want the judges to see it their way. So, you know, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we just have a good, clean competition. And like I said, we don't want any kind of bias from other parts of the country. So you feel there is bias? You feel you're not getting a fair deal going into this? Well, we've negotiated it so that we feel like we've got a fair deal moving forward. And I think that's all been signed off as we speak, David. And, um, but yeah, you know, we don't, we, we want a we want a fair shake of it, yeah. Dave, you want to respond to the, the comments? <clears throat> Dealing with Mark Cadell has been trickier than dealing with Eddie Hearn or Bob Arum because it's his big moment to shine and you know he's the smartest man in the room so we're, we're actually a lot more relaxed about it because when, when Junior's lying on the ground it doesn't matter who the judges are. Oh. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, I'm, I'm going to now allow you to just play more the lead forward with KB. Yeah. It's really, um, it's quite flattering what they were saying about my influence in Christchurch. You know, I left Christchurch in 1992, and I haven't lived in Christchurch or New Zealand for nearly three decades. So the fact that I have all this influence with the officials in Christchurch is, is really laughable. Sure, I was born in Christchurch, so was Mark Cadell. We're both Cantabrians. In fact, Mark, Mark Cadell and I went to the same school. So, it would be fair to say the fact that he lives here in New Zealand, that he would have more uh, influence with contacts with people in Christchurch and, and New Zealand than what I do. So let's talk about the training camps, because there's been a lot of talk and I'm hearing a lot of chat about who's just the better training camp. Eugene Ben, who was the assistant, by the way, to the trainer Doug Finding. Eugene, uh, there has been a suggestion coming from others that maybe uh, it's not a good thing that Junior is training sort of in an open form with MMA fights, not specifically boxers. Do you what's your response to that? Celebrity trainers back, baby. <laughs> Doug is the head trainer, I'm the media trainer. Okay, so I just always, out of respect, I always try to make that clear that uh, we, have, we have a fantastic coaching team. And I'm a very small part of it, to be honest. Uh, Mox uh, is a big part of it. Um, Doug's a big part of it. But look, uh, not training with a boxing team. We have one of the best boxing teams in the country at the moment training at City Kickboxing. We we have some of the we have some of the best uh, uh, amateur boxing fighters. There's a group of about 25 boxers that run at the track every Saturday. That's a pretty big boxing team in this country. <coughs> Unfortunately, just because of the way things are, our boxing team gets a little bit overshadowed by some of these other celebrity fighters that we have at the gym. But um, he's training with boxers, uh, very good, high quality boxers, 
um, for this whole camp. And they had a fantastic boxing team, the city kickboxing boxing team, which is, uh, yeah, like I said, is, is a legit uh, boxing team, one of the best in the country at the moment. We had the added benefit of being able to throw um, some of these uh, uh, UFC guys in the end who, who we think are suitable to give us the right look for Joseph. And, and we've used that resource as well to help Junior. It can't bring anything, it can't be anything but positive. Uh, we have heard around the track, you know, the chatter uh, that you feel yours is the better approach than maybe uh, Joseph needs a new trainer, needs a new head trainer. Uh, I mean, Joseph has said to me that he wanted to come to City Kickboxing. Um, you have to talk to him about in what capacity. Maybe he just wanted to come and have a cup of tea with me. Maybe he just wanted to train. Maybe, uh, I don't know, that's, we never got into the details. But um, I will email him the gym fees tomorrow. <laughs> and maybe he can look over the gym fees and if he can afford it, which I think he can, he can join the gym like anybody else. So Kevin, you, you'd like to respond, understandably? Why? <laughs> what, do, you, do, you want, do you want to respond? Look, I tell you, one thing we do know is like it's very, very common this close to a fight that the other teams, the fighters or the people around the team make comments to deflect from the fight, to try and raise an emotional response, to try and get you to lose your focus. But right at the moment, Joseph, myself, David Higgins and our whole team very, very focused. We understand the significance of this fight. We aren't going to be dragged into any out of the ring discussions. Our focus is inside the ring, as you will see on Saturday night. Wow, you are a changed man. Uh, let's talk about where Joseph is. You talk about the significance of this fight. Uh, my early question was suggesting is this a, a maker or a breaker career-wise? What statement do you need to make for the rest of the boxing world, from Joseph Parker. So oh, it's me, to me. No, I'm talking to you. Okay. Obviously, it's very, very important for us. So when you said before, is this a, a, a make or break fight for us? Yes, the answer is yes. If we do not deliver on Saturday night, it's going to be very, very hard for us to get back into any position to fight a top five, a top 10 fight, let alone a world title shot. We still believe in Joseph, Totally, 100%, he believes in himself. Our goal is to get back into the ring fighting for the world title. And it starts by knocking out Junior Barr on Saturday night. Look, it's very, very exciting for New Zealand to have a number five in the world fight a number three in the world. And really, you know, the job that's been done by both teams to secure these positions is very, very creditable. And the winner of this fight is going to find himself in a, in a terrific position moving forward. We're just going to make sure that that is us moving forward. So this is one final thought on what you think about the other fighter, both from a trainer's perspective. I'll go with you, Kevin, since you're still holding the mic. Uh, where do you feel you can get Junior Far? Well, look, you know, firstly, Doug's done a fantastic job in getting Junior to 19-0. and 0. <coughs> And, um, you know, he's built his skill up over the last four years. But it is only four years, and Junior Barr is still not tested. He's definitely not tested in this type of arena. He's fighting against you know, a fighter who uh, has 21 knockouts and his 27 victories. He's coming off knockout wins in his last three fights. Junior's gone the distance twice in his last three fights. Joseph Parker is one of the elite fighters in the world at the moment, and we will see that on Saturday night. There is a huge big difference here. There is a huge step up in class for Junior. And I'm hey, I'm not saying he can't do it because this is his opportunity to shine. But you know, when the bright lights go on and you walk out to the ring, it's not everybody's cup of tea. One thing I can tell you about Joseph Parker is one of the strengths of, of him is that when the lights are at the brightest, it's when he is at the happiest. He loves the pressure. He's shown that right throughout his career. On Saturday night, this will, be a, this will be a new experience for Junior, both mentally, emotionally, and physically. He's never been tested like he'll be tested on Saturday night. And hey, all good luck to him. 
He's a, hey, he seems like a really nice guy. I don't know him personally, but he's, hey, he's done a great job to get into 19 and 0. But this is a different level that he is in, and he'll see that on Saturday night. And just before I come to Eugene, I have to ask Mark Cadell, because I've asked you this question before yeah. I want to get, get it clear and clear. Is this fight too soon for Junior Farm? No, I mean, we had some great news two weeks ago. <clears throat> we were trying to get him to 90% of his blood work by five night and focus on other areas of, of you know, mental performance and game plan to, to get a victory. And so we didn't have all the tools in the, in the box and we weren't going to talk about that. But, you know, luckily, you know, I won't say luckily, <clears throat> we've done a lot of work. Um, you know, Dr. Sarah Bell, David Neathy, you know, Glenn Kearney, nutrition, um, the boys at the gym. Um, have done an amazing job and we had the full 100% blood work came back two weeks ago. Uh, we were way ahead of the schedule, we couldn't believe it, it was, um, we were really chuffed. So we know, you know, how, how and we can see it in the performance, you know, because at the end of the day when things aren't right, you see it in the spa and you, you know, that's how we noticed the last time that, that something had happened very quickly, something happened to Junior and we had an issue, we need to deal with it and just like this camp here, you know, probably five or six weeks ago, we were, we, this, this was our target, and two weeks ago we got the, the 100%, and so we're, we're at the moon that, that he is 100% fully fit. And you and have seen that? Yeah, no, and we got the black and whites of it, you know. I think I said um, <clears throat> a, a few press conferences ago, you can't fudge a blood test, you know, it's just, it's what it, it is what it is, and so Junior's was perfect. So we're at we're the moon. So we're at the moon with his health. We are absolutely chuffed with the performance and the support of the doctors and nutrition and, and the performance guys to, to, to support Junior, to put the right game plan in place and to be able to execute. If it's nice and money having a plan, then he's actually achieving the goal of the plan. We've done that. So, you know, and that, that, that also comes down to discipline of Junior following what we see them, you know, because it's easier to derail off the tracks with this. And so we aced it. We are, we're, we're, we gave ourselves a pat on the back for it. We're, we're really happy, you know. Okay, uh, usually I'll ask you now to respond to comments of Kevin and ask you how are you going to execute a victory for Junior Fire against Joseph Parker? Yeah, look, you can't actually argue with anything Kevin said. Like, every fighter reaches a point in their career where they have to hit the next level, take the step up, um, announce themselves to the world. Joseph, at one point in his career, had to do it. Um, and Joseph had to battle all the things that uh, Kevin talked about himself, except obviously with a different opponent. Junior's at that same point in his career. And uh, I mean, we're, we're gracious enough that um, Joseph has given us this opportunity. And we're going to 100% make the most of this opportunity. We are going to treat this fight like we should be treating it. We've got nothing to lose. There's, there's no pressure on us. We're going to get an early lead in this fight, and we're going to maintain that lead. If an opportunity comes to hurt Joseph, we'll take advantage of it. But we're going to get an early lead. We're going to hold on to that lead, and, we'll, and Junior's going to get his um, hand raised, and he's good to go uh, by a decision. But if an opportunity arises, then we're going to take it. We must remember, look, let me, let me pay a little bit of homage to the human side of the sport. Joseph has a dream to get back a world title. Junior has a dream to set up his family and his young kids for the rest of uh, their lives. Someone's not going to be able to achieve that dream. Someone's going to get that dream shattered. That's the other side of the sport that we have to understand is that one of these guys is going to fade away a little bit and they're going to go into, you know, what fighters go through, a bit of a depression and they're going to have to rebuild themselves. That's sad. That's sad. But that's just how the sport works. There can only be one winner. And, um, um, you know, unfortunately for, for Joseph and Kevin, uh, that's going to be us on Saturday. That's all I've got to say. Plenty. All right, final thoughts from the two fighters. Uh, Junior, I'll give you a chance just to get those final thoughts off your chest and then you can start focusing on the questions that are going to be asked from our uh, my press colleagues. So, final thoughts on the night? I feel good. I can't wait for Saturday night. I'll see you guys there. <laughs> Short and sweet. Joseph? Yeah. Um, I'll be great to my parents and uncle here, my team partner. Thanks for being a uh, great uh, support throughout the camp. Uh, good to see the other fighters here on the undercard. It's going to be exciting to see them fight. But Amy, John, 
in Bonu and very looking forward to going on a great show. Thank you, Joseph. All right, now, if you just a reminder to the assembled media, there are no one on ones, okay? No, you love them, but you're not going to get them. So you've got to raise your hand, we'll get you a microphone, and ask away to any of the people at the top table. So put your hand up and uh, ask away. Don't all rush. James, TV3. Um, junior, there's no secret that if he knocks you out, uh, in likely face Derek or in next. Does that apply to the view when you want to demand? Yep, of course. You know they've been um, putting a post about a possible fight after um, me. So you know, I come out victorious on Saturday. I, uh, I suppose that fight should be there for me. Questions? Hands up, please, just for our microphones. David, um, where are we at with the judges and that, those negotiations? So. Um, we followed the, the contract process, which was the NZPBA nominate a list that gets sent to the WBO. They signed it off. But then Mark kicked up a fuss and said so about Christchurch. And so Mark and I got together, and I think we're nearly there. We, we gave a compromise and, and that we allowed a judge in that was not top of our list, and vice versa. Um, so it, bar a couple of little things, like who's supervising the dressing room, I think we'll get there in the next couple of days. But right now, I can't tell you the full list of officials. No gloves issues? The, the, the gloving process was intricately written into the contract in a step-by-step -step manner such that the, um, yeah, so no, the, I mean, the gloves certainly won't be an excuse for their side on Saturday. No glove issues, Mark? No, no glove issues. The contract's pretty clear that the guys get the gloves uh, an hour and a half before the fight delivered and then no one's allowed to touch the gloves until they go into the fighter's hands and okay. um, we're, we're really happy with that and um, yeah, happy days. Further questions? Just put your hand up, please. James again. Um, it's also been made clear that uh, Joe needs a quick knockout. Do you play into that, Eugene, as part of your plan? Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we, uh, our strategy, uh, as with all strategy, is multifaceted, and we, of course, we've made allowances for Joseph to come on early. In fact, we, have, we, 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 we think he's probably going to come out, come out early quite hard, um, and we're definitely prepared for that. So, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> So just remember, no one-on-ones if there are no further questions. Anyone further go up? There's a hand up. Yeah, could someone pass the Oh, okay. Missed that one. Uh, uh, you, you, I mean, there has been, in, in June as well, there has been a lot of talk about Chisora for Joe. Do, do you think, well, there's a sense in the camp that they're looking past you guys? Um, look, it's, yeah, look, when you're, when it's, it's part of human nature. When you're, like, being to the heights that Joseph's at, and you've got the people around him that Joseph has, without trying to offend the people around him who are, who, who are telling him that he's this and that. You, you want to, it's natural for you to look past someone who doesn't have as big a name that you perceive to not be on the same level as you. But that's like, that's, I can't talk about this too much because that's what I want Joseph to do. Um, because that's, that, that plays into our hands perfectly. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he is. There's a question for them whether they're looking past Junior. Um, realistically, they're going to say no. In reality, we will never know. You know that you've got to delve into these those minds really deeply. Yeah. Questions? Uh, junior, Eugene spoke about this and a win for you being potentially life changing. What would a win mean for you and your family? Life changing. Um, yeah. So you know this uh, this the sets up. Uh, awesome career, you know. This um, this is a big fights for me, um, which means I can fight more for my family as well. Um, yeah, and just really, so it's really solidify my place in the heavyweight division, which is what I want. And Joe, um, in terms of chasing a knockout, how how does that dynamic um, make your approach different? I mean, have you ever gone into a fight really wanting and pursuing a, a knockout as much as you are in this fight? Um, I say that I want a knockout, but we have a plan in place. I go in there, execute the plan, and have fun. You know, all the hard work's been done in the camp, you know, all the early mornings and all the training sessions. Now it's time to dance. 
And when you live in flow, that just happens. Joan, will you be looking at um, City Kickboxing uh, membership fees? Can you uh, <laughs> give us a rundown of the background to that, please? Yeah, I think we discussed the cup of tea, as you mentioned. Um, and then more so when, when I beat Junior, then I can use them for sparring and we can help each other. Well, there, there is a rematch clause after the one chosen, so two fights down the track, probably. So that's the only thing that I'll be doing. Kevin, can you um, speak to Joe's fitness and form? He's had some major fights before. How does he compare to, um, say, the build-up to the Ruiz or Joshua fight? Well, I can honestly tell you that uh, the Joseph Barker that will enter the ring on Saturday night is in much better shape both physically and mentally, than the Joseph Parker that stepped into the ring against Andy Ruiz. And a lot of people might find that hard to believe, but Joe will back me up on this. Um, we're in really good shape. You know, the, the postponement of the fight actually played into our hands uh, really well. Um, as, as it was well documented, you know, I came out here in, in October for a seven week camp. Uh, Eugene thought we were taking, uh, taking the fight lightly and we should have done a longer camp. We had 45 rounds of sparring in prior to Christmas. We've sparred 101 rounds since January 4, uh, which is a lot of sparring. So Joe was, uh, we, we had the surgery, but he's uh, in very good shape and he's well prepared. And it's a, it's a much better Joseph Parker uh, for February 27th than the one we would have seen on December 12th. And just with the elbow surgery, he said a couple of weeks ago that he was punching pain free, Junior didn't seem to think that would be the case, that he'd still be feeling it a little bit. Can you clear that up? Punching, uh, no pain. Yeah. You'll see it on Saturday when it comes flying. <laughs> Was that fighting tool? <laughs> we, we, we talk. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, Joe, I'm just... Um, when you look back to 2009 and, and the way Lever Tour came out and sort of silenced a lot of doubters back then and that explosive performance, do you sort of take inspiration from that and have you channel a bit of that yourself this weekend? Yeah, that's, um, that, was a, that was one of the big fights uh, in, here in New Zealand. It was great to watch. I remember watching it and seeing the performance that he put on. And you know, you could take a bit of inspiration from you know, what he did coming up fast and strong, finishing the very Okay, look, we're going to do a face-off in just a moment, but just to make this easy, I'll just uh, f close this press conference officially. Uh, thank you all for coming and uh, getting a little bit excited. Now, we're all a bit excited about this one. Uh, for the Stonewood Homes, Joseph Parker, Junior Far Heavyweight Button Association with headquarters. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster. They start at $69. Uh, PPV, uh, that's pay-per-view, uh, is $49.99. You can purchase that at Sparksport. .co.nz. It'll be broadcast here in New Zealand on Spark Sport Pay Per View, main event channel 521 on Australia, TV3 in Samoa, and worldwide on DAZN. Once again, our thanks to the suite of sponsors that made this possible in a crazy old world. We are incredibly lucky, and just to remember that. But right now, I'll ask the uh, two fighters to come out and stand in front for a face off. So, uh, <coughs> face to face, nose to nose. Also, don't forget Friday at the headquarters of the Viaduct will be the weigh-in. Friday, headquarters, Viaduct weigh-in for the biggest fight night in New Zealand history. In front of the sign, Dave, is it? Yeah, in front of the sign. Okay. 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 That's good, Junior. Let's go, Jim. How about first up? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Right in close. Good. Good. Side by side. side, by side. Yep. Don't forget Friday, 11 o'clock at the headquarters on the viaduct will be the weigh-in. We'll see you all there. Slightly in
Thank you. 